to this chart, what is the biggest driver of inflation during the pandemic? The blue is the, the dark blue is the recent period. It would be corporate profits. And what is that percentage? It is 54%, and that number does stay that level of high if you update that number to more recent numbers as well. Congresswoman Katie Porter brought her whiteboard out again to inform the American people about what's really driving inflation. Now, we've talked about inflation on the show. I think there are multiple factors, but corporate greed certainly happens to be one of them. And so why don't we take a look at how the rest of that conversation went, and then we'll break it down. So over half of the increased prices people are paying are coming from increases in corporate profits. Yes, the unit price index is reflected in corporate profits as opposed to other costs. And how does that compare to historically to other periods of inflation or uh, over other periods of economic time? As reflected there in another analysis, it is significantly higher in this recovery, 11.5%. And what is it today? Uh, 53%. So I want to make sure everyone in America understands this chart. What is a unit labor cost? The cost, wages and an associated right. work cost. So we could just wages. What is a non-labor input cost? Uh, a variety of things, including um, maintenance and, in, and investments. Okay, so I, I have to buy the, buy the stuff to make the widget. I have to have a factory, I have to keep the lights on, I have to hire someone to make the widget. That's this stuff. And this is what I add on, on top. You know, I, I love when she brings the whiteboard out because mm -hmm. our education system, I think intentionally doesn't dive into this. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of Americans graduate high school not really understanding mm -hmm. how our economy works, how mm -hmm. corporations function, what the fiduciary responsibility is for these corporations and their executives. Mm -hmm. uh, but Nomi, I want you to further break down what, what they're talking about here. Um, yeah, and first of all, shout out to the Economic Policy Institute for putting that data together and, 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 and Rep Porter for just being awesome with it. I really think she needs to take that whiteboard to the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. and have a sit down with Jerome Powell who does not understand it or refuses to acknowledge it. What that's basically saying is the price increases that we've been experiencing, that we are experiencing through companies, are a result predominantly more than half of those companies expanding their profit margins, not paying their workers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and not only is that the result, this result has been particularly obvious and onerous in the years since the pandemic, when all this money was created as well, as we were talking about in the other segment. But, but these two years mm -hmm. have created a situation where companies can use the fact that there is inflated prices. There are higher food and fuel costs. There are things that cost more. There's supply chain disruptions, there's problems, there's geopolitics. But what they've done is they've sort of bootstrapped from that. They've yeah. expanded, they've increased prices by so much more than they have in the past because they have that cover. Yes, I, yeah, exactly. I mean, they're exploiting some of the supply chain issues as the reason for the price increases, as the reason why you're seeing that you know high cost of food and all of that in the market. And it's it's interesting because while it's true, it's just demonstrably true. The thing that I worry about is when you look at polls, and we've talked about several polls this week alone in regard to how voters are feeling as we get closer and closer to the midterms. Who do voters, including Democrats, blame inflation on? And they blame it on Biden, mm -hmm. right? It's very mm -hmm. simple. It's a very mm -hmm. simple way of thinking about mm -hmm. what's happening in the country. And by the way, across the globe right now. Mm -hmm. And it's frustrating because I don't think that the Democratic Party has done a good job in communicating what's really transpiring here. Mm -hmm. They're not really talking about the corporate greed in a repetitive, I think it needs to be repetitive and mm -hmm. robust way. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that Katie Porter is doing yeah. it. Obviously, she's a Democrat. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that the Biden administration is being blamed for it, you know, would make you think that they would have some sort of campaign in place to push back against that narrative. Yeah, it, 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 it's really astonishing that they don't because there's two things going on with the Biden administration. It could have been any administration in power right now. Okay, they mm -hmm. are the ones in power when this inflation, when this greedflation from corporations has been running rampant together for multiple reasons. They've also been in charge of a bipartisan infrastructure act where they decided, okay, well maybe we can actually grow the economy um, instead of just simply being sort of victims to 
this corporate inflation. Mm -hmm. But but they're not even talking about the remedy to inflation. They're not breaking down inflation either. They're literally like hiding from the situation. And and by effectively, and what Biden did that was also um, not too bright is he has let the Fed control the narrative on inflation. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's such a great point. And if you listen to Jerome Powell, you know he does these. Uh, uh, press conferences and he addresses it, he blames it squarely on workers. <laughs> right. Yeah, who have, again, I've said this a billion times, but I'll say it again, who haven't seen their wages increase since the 1970s. <laughs> so they're actually the ones suffering the most from inflation. That's right. And uh, he doesn't really draw much attention or any attention uh, to the corporate greed angle. I wanna share a few other details with you to kind of help understand what these companies and these corporations are up to. So for instance, last summer, Kroger CEO Rodney McMullen said that a little bit of inflation is always good in our business because customers don't overly react to increases in prices. Kroger's CFO, Gary Millerchip, told shareholders in October, quote, we've been very comfortable with our ability to pass on the increases we've seen at this point, and we would expect that to continue to be the case. The most enraging thing you can listen to is those investor calls. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> well, and, and let's break those things down, like yeah. add them together. Right. On the one hand, wages haven't kept up with inflation. On the other hand, as 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 Katie Porter was saying and and and, and citing that report and those stats. Um, the last two years have been particularly bad for wages as a percentage of corporate profits anyway, in that they are not part of that increase. And then you have the corporate CEO saying, "Oh, and by the way, it's okay to charge people more. So they're charging the people that don't have the wages, that have kept up with the prices more. So it's like they're, they're from two angles hurting yeah. most of the country. It's, it's crazy. So let's talk about in, in a perfect world where we actually had politicians who cared about us <laughs> and, and our best interests and wanted to do something about this, what would be a possible solution, right? I mean, would it be regulation in regard to you know the price gouging that we're seeing? Is it something else? I mean, what would you propose uh, be done by leaders in Congress and maybe even the executive branch uh, in response to this? Well, it's it's something they're they're not going to talk about, and don't like to do. But we do need some form of, of a price ratio cap mm -hmm. um, to the level of inflated prices that's coming from these corporations. The data is there, even if that particular data isn't a hundred percent perfect. The data is there to indicate where these price increases are coming from on top of where the supply chain and other geopolitical disruptions are causing prices to be. Mm. Um, so that information is there. So if you had a, a sort of price cap ratio and you also have a situation where we need to actually have corporations pay taxes. We yes. still exist in a world <laughs> where most people pay most of the taxes that go into the Treasury Department of the United States and around the world, particularly though in the United States. Yep than corporations do. And yet they're getting all this benefit. They're not paying people, they're increasing their prices, you know, they're hurting the rest of the economy, and they're not paying for it. Yeah. So you could you could enforce, you know, the tax laws to begin with, even before you make them more fair. Yeah, definitely. And I would add to it, I mean, in terms of asset inflation, uh, I would outlaw stock buybacks. I mean, what do these corporations use their profits for? To generate more profits by buying shares of their own stock. Uh, stocks, and then you know th that's how executives are also paid. So all the incentives are there for the executives to take those profits, uh, buy shares of their own stocks, and maximize the profits. You know, even further. It's it's incredible, it really is. The system is set up in in this way on purpose, and uh, it's unfortunate that we don't have. We, there's maybe like a handful, if that, of politicians who actually care about this, try to draw attention to it. Uh, but when you have a two party system that's kind of melded into one due to the way campaigns are financed, due to the fact that members of Congress are allowed to invest in individual stocks themselves, they have a vested interest literally to keep this system going to yeah. the detriment of everyone else. Yeah, yeah. that's absolutely right.